Hey guys, nice to see you again so soon. So I know I ended the video last episode, but this is gonna be like a little epilogue. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, I wanna talk about my experience with Iraq, traveling, vlogging and stuff. Um, but first we need to go back to the UK, <laughs> so at uh, Bill Airport. So yeah, we're just gonna go through and meet up with a special friend in London. And yeah, talk about our experience in Iraq. <laughs> Trying to spend the rest of my Iraqi dinner. We got past all the little checkpoints and passport checks and you know, security. So now we're just chilling and waiting with my little chicken sandwich and a little muffin, some water, water, water. So yeah, we're gonna eat up and then we're gonna fly away. <laughs> We arrived at Istanbul Airport. That was complicated and very easy at the same time. The security was so simple. I didn't have to remove any of my liquids, my laptop, my phone. It just could all go in the same tray. It was so easy. Um, it was just that I wasn't sure about the boarding pass because they gave me a boarding pass at our bill. And I was like, oh, so is this my boarding pass? I wasn't sure. So I just went to the desk and asked. And they're like, yeah, it is, but we'll give you a new one anyway. So I got a new boarding pass. So yeah, let's just walk around, let's chill and wait for our flight. We've got what, like six, six hours, I think, uh, waiting here. And then we're gonna head back to London. Okay, last flight, last one. Walking up to it now. It's so cold out here. We've arrived in London, guys, finally. Um, I will say though, when I was at the airport, the the passport um, people, the check it, the people who check your passports, were very suspicious when I said that I had come from Iraq. She was like, "Why? Why are you going there?" She said, "How many? How long are we there for?" Like, of course, I, I guess you may have to ask these kind of questions, but she was so like, "What the fuck?" But yeah, it, it's funny to me. She just like couldn't understand why I was there for tourism because I was like, oh, I'm there, for I'm a tourist. Like tourism, really? It's like yes, <laughs> it's a lovely place. Yeah, now we're gonna go to a cafe, chill out for a while, and we're gonna meet someone a bit later on who you may hopefully recognise. <laughs> Salam alaikum. <laughs> How are you? I know, literally. <laughs> oh my god, we have been reunited. We're who? <laughs> Yeah, we came to this Yemen restaurant, but right across, look at this guys. There's an Iraqi restaurant in London and we completely missed it. I can't believe that. That is... How the heck? Why are they recording us? Yeah, they're like, what are they doing? Guys, next time in London, I'll come here. I think so now that you've had time to reflect on your trip, what do you think? I would give Iraq nine and a half out of ten. Nine the reason why is the lovely people I've met, mm. the logistics, mm. you know, quite hard as well. Oh, food! <laughs> it's here. It's mine. But finish your thought, finish your thought. Um, logistics. Logistics, also just the vibe and the atmosphere yeah. and the activities. I think at a perfect time. So when I went to Fossil, mm. we had the Spring Festival, but I missed it by half an hour. Oh. Right? And then we went to Babylon. It was the last night of the festival. Yes, that was so good. And what else? There were so many things to do. For me, I think it's the people. Yes, I agree. Yeah, so the people. I give a nine, nine and a half. Nine and a half. It's cheap and cheap. It's quite cheap and cheap. Yes. Nature oh. as well. Sorry? Nature. Oh my god, yes. The scenery. In Kurdistan uh, especially. In Kurdistan, yeah, that's perfect. History, lots of history. So there's so much, guys. This, yeah, Nadia loved it. Just give her nine and a half. I will. When I'm back home, I will give you like my thoughts because I'm still processing You're everything. Still processing. Yeah, it's still it's, it'll be very similar to yours, to be honest. But yeah, we love it. We love Iraq. <laughs> still upset about the Iraqi restaurant across the street. Honestly, I know. Yeah, look, look at this bread. This bread is huge. Look at my hand. That is some big ass bread. Okay, let's dig in. Poor Nadia has to wait even longer again for her food, but it will be here soon, don't it'll worry. It will be here soon. Yeah. Just eat on my behalf. Okay, I'm eating for you as well. 
quite windy. It is. It's, it's very cold. Okay, oh, so. Yours is in your bag. Sorry? No, I was going to say yours is in your bag. Oh, I don't have a jacket. Oh, jumper? No, I, I had a jacket, but I chucked it in the bin when I was at the airport. So you only have t shirts? Yeah. No comments. <laughs> well, I mean, I was in Iraq. What am I going to need that for? Yeah, but when you leave, Iraq, yeah, but it's, at some point, it's just taking it all with me. Like it's too if much. You say so. No, I'm fine. I'm a strong, independent woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're going to head to the train station now. Um, yeah, we're going to say goodbye to Nadia. Oh. I've missed you. Yes, I've missed you too. But it's not the end. It's not the end. No, we will have many more adventures together. It's only the beginning. Exactly. Only the beginning, guys. So yeah. Keep supporting Jack on his YouTube. Okay? Oh, thank you, honey. Yes, please. <laughs> right, guys. We're gonna head to the train station and we'll make our way back to my my parents' house. So yalla yalla yalla. Change here for the rail air coach link to Heathrow Airport. We made it back, guys. Where we started in my bedroom at my parents' house. Uh, it's kind of weird being back. I'm not gonna lie. Very strange. Um, my parents actually have no idea where I've been. I didn't tell them that I was um, going to Iraq. They think I've been in England this whole time. I don't know how to tell them exactly, um, or if I even should. Uh, I really don't. So perhaps one day I will um, maybe film their reaction to like my videos or something and show you guys. I have a horrible feeling they're not going to take it well, but I, the reason I didn't tell them is because um, I did tell them once that I was going to go to Iraq last year and they didn't take it well. They thought it was too dangerous and we had like a big falling out, um, like really, really bad falling out. And I didn't want the stress of them worrying. So that's why I decided not to tell them. I wish I could. I really do. But their perception of Iraq is much like many others. People think it's still very, very dangerous. But I think my videos... And many other videos, not just mine, have shown and proved that it is really not dangerous whatsoever. Honestly, like, for me, it's been the best experience of my entire life. Um, so many amazing memories. So yeah, let us, let us talk about the experience and of course with vlogging as well. So I do think that vlogging is very, very challenging actually. I thought it would be much easier than it was. And there's lots of things that um, that I wanted to do and wanted to say that I just didn't um, because I was so caught up in the moment. There's a lot of things you have to like think about when you're vlogging. Like th this camera, I don't know if it's actually the best for maybe travel vlogging. It's like the um, Osmo Pocket Edition 2. It's, got, it's on like a gimbal. The footage is really nice. It's really smooth, but it's really hard to um, film with it because I've got to make sure the camera is looking at me. It's not like up, because that did happen sometimes and I've lost footage where the camera's been like looking somewhere else and I thought it was on me or it's like, you know, down too far, up too far. And I didn't notice because the screen, I'm like the screen um, to see myself is so small. So when I'm like vlogging, I can't really see what exactly is being filmed. Um, so I may get a new camera when I, like on my uh, my further travels, I may get a different camera. This one is still good, but yeah, for like fast pace. And the reason that a lot of the times I didn't turn the camera around is because it's actually a bit of a hassle. You have to press the button three times and then the camera waits. So it takes about a second to press it and the camera waits about a second to like, you know, register that it wants to turn and then like another second. So it's like a good three and a half seconds for the whole camera to just turn around where, you know, if I had something like a camera, I could literally just do that, turn it around, like it takes less than a second. Whereas this, it takes a while and you can mess up pressing it. So when you're in this kind of like traveling, you know, trying to talk to people, show people stuff, if the camera doesn't turn around, you've missed the moment. Um, so that, yeah, I, I, I do like this camera and it's very good, discreet, it's small, it's great. But I think maybe next time I may get a, um, maybe a different camera, we'll see. We will see. I have actually loved vlogging though. It's been so much fun. And I can't believe that there's, I've got like a thousand subscribers now. Like I started this with like 40 or even less. And I can't, I cannot believe how many of you there are now. So to everyone who has subscribed, who has watched the videos, like commented, like honestly, thank you so much. It means so much to me. I've met like so many amazing people just through YouTube as well. Um, it's been quite incredible. I really, I really, really do appreciate all the support and help that um, you have given me. And I hope, you know, you'll stick around for my 
my other adventures and we can go on together um so yeah just thank you so much <laughs> but like with a with iraq it's just a, an incredible place really is incredible um i've had mostly mostly positive experiences for the whole thing very very positive the people i think are the highlights for me i've met some of the most amazing kind people in my entire life really um, it's really like opened my eyes. Like I knew, for me personally, I knew that Iraq was a very safe place, um, a very cool, interesting, um, and it had all this history and culture. And I knew about this, but actually experience it, experiencing it has been just unbelievable. Um, and to be honest, I, I want, like I was thinking maybe I'll go back in like two years, but I kind of, I feel like I want to go back like as soon as possible, maybe like early next year. So I don't know, because now that I'm back, I'm kind of missing it so much. The hospitality has completely like blown me away though. Like the amount of times that people just don't let you pay for anything, um, for food or just anything. Like I say, it's just, it's just incredible. Um, I just, uh, honestly, that kind of thing never happens over here in the UK. So to, to actually experience it, it's the people I cannot praise the people enough like they are some of the kindest most welcoming people ever and I, like I said I think that is my highlight I, I went most with an idea to see the history and all the ruins and they were incredible um really amazing but I think the people really did surprise me even more about how just how great they were um, people that I knew, you know, through social media and people that I just met randomly, all of them were great. Um, there are only like a few that were a bit like, I only met a few like strange kind of odd people who were a bit like sketchy. And if I did, I would usually just remove myself from that situation. I would just be like, ah, I don't feel like being here. And I would just like, I'm going now. I don't really want to hang around with you guys. Um, but otherwise that, but those are very few and far between. Um, yeah, <laughs> for like the historical sites, because that was probably my main reason for going to see like ancient Babylon, the Hanging Gardens, or I guess the ground where it was allegedly, um, allegedly where it was. But the historical sites were amazing. The only kind of sad thing is, is that they're not very well maintained. Um, so they're kind of in a state in a way. They still look really cool, but they're not very touristy. And I think they overcharge as well, in my opinion. Um, considering what you'll get what you're getting but it's like i think 25 mostly are 25,000 dinar which is like 19 dollars which and it's not that much to see you literally could spend max i would say at some of these sites like half an hour to like other places to an hour i think the only places that were probably worth it that worth the price was there was a fortress near kabbalah which i can't say um yeah, I can't actually pronounce it. I, I couldn't even pronounce it when I was there. But that was 25,000 dinar. And that place felt like it was probably worth it because of how big it was. But a lot of the other places, like the Ziggurat of Ur, um, that was 25,000 dinar. I don't think it was worth that much to see it. More, Maybe like 10,000. That would make more sense to me. And this is like tourist priced. So like for locals, it's very cheap. It's like, I think 3,000 dinar, which is like nothing. So I feel like if these sites were really well maintained, then I the price the price could be justified, but yeah they can be quite expensive and even getting to some of them is expensive. Like the ziggurat of Akuf, Akuf, which is like near Baghdad, that was um it was twenty five thousand to see it, but the taxi driver, um, he had to wait there, um so it, it cost like I think ten thousand to get there, another ten thousand for him to wait, and then ten thousand to take us back, so that's like thirty thousand. Um, which is quite, that kind of chocks up to a lot. Um, luckily, I didn't have to pay all that. It was just him taking us there. And then we met some other people who were very kind to take us back. The historical sites are very cool to see, but they can get quite pricey if you want to see a lot of them. Um, and I wanted to see as many as possible. So I still am glad that I went to them and I do think it's worth it. I think I should talk about like the negative sides I had. I mostly, <laughs> I think... The most negative stuff was mostly perhaps just the uh, the police, um, which it, it wasn't all like that bad. 
Um, the only like issues I had was in Nazaria, um, and it was fine really. It was just in the moment it was a bit crazy, and then in heat um, with the police, they were very um, like they weren't. They were more of an inconvenience, although it just felt very intense at the time. For the most part, the police have actually been very kind, um, and they are very you know just concerned about your safety more than anything they, like, they want to know why you're there but they also want you to be very safe so yeah so with a Nazaria I got taken to the police station because he that that certain police officer thought it was like forbidden to film um and then the next time I was in heat there are lots of different like police military intelligence and they don't communicate with each other so my host who I was staying with told one one of them that I was coming and staying but the others, they don't communicate, so they didn't know. So when they saw me, yeah, they took my passport, I had to go to like a government building, fill out a form. So although it felt very intense, um, they were still very nice. They were very nice, although that particular case, it did feel weird. Um, I don't know, yeah, it, it was fine though. And I, heat is definitely one of my highlights going to it. Um, I really enjoyed what, what they're doing there with the HHU, with Ahmed. Um, a very beautiful place and he said that eventually the the bases of these like certain agencies are gonna leave heat so it'll pro it will become more accessible and easier to get to yeah mostly the negative stuff was just about more mostly inconvenience and I wasn't exactly sure what was going on but that's mostly because of the language barrier like if I could speak Arabic I'm pretty sure it would go away because when I was in certain situations that seemed like they were gonna get um if someone was confused by what i was doing if i had some with me they could just explain it and it was fine so and i did have like google translate but i realized that i feel like not everyone could actually write in and read in arabic because um, when i gave them my phone to write a lot of them they couldn't they were like no <laughs> and some of them actually didn't realize it was a translator because someone had to someone if i gave my phone to someone the tr and, and it had like the arabic on my phone um, they still looked confused and then someone would have to tell them like oh it's a translator it's like oh I see I think this this being my first ever like solo experience abroad I think I did pretty well um, <laughs> it was I had to face many different challenges just you know doing things alone in different country it's quite like dramatic to do considering I'm I'm I, I'm especially me because I'm not I'm very quite social but I can also be very anti-social so and Iraq is a very very social place a very very sociable so it was kind of getting used to that to be honest I was just open to everything really I tried to be as open as possible um, just to try everything um, just experience what was there so there is so much more of Iraq that I really want to see because I feel like I've only scratched the surface, um, especially with Kurdistan. Um, there's so much more I want to see in Kurdistan. And I definitely will be going back to see these different cities and places. Um, even in Southern Iraq, there were cities that I just, I didn't have time to go to. Um, so I'm very excited to return. I just, w I definitely would recommend going. If like you're thinking about it or or if you had a perception of Iraq, I hopefully that has changed if you like watch these videos because it is a very safe place. Never once did I feel I was in danger. I can say that definitely. All the negative or all the like slight negative experiences I had, none of them were like, oh, I feel in danger. I'm worried for my safety. I always felt extremely safe. It's been like a really amazing experience, very life-changing, I would say, for me. And it's kind of, it had really has invigorated me to want to see different countries and I want there's so many more countries in the Middle East that I want to explore as like I say I'm doing this to I want to see each seven ancient wonder but beyond that I really want to explore the Middle East um, there's so many other countries like uh, Syria, Kuwait, um, Yemen, Oman, like Saudi Arabia so many that I want, really do want to go to. Oh come here you oh Hello. Oh, hello, Regina. <laughs> I missed, I did miss my little puppy. Mm. Right, guys, I think I'm going to end it here. Thank you again, all of you, everyone who watched me, everyone who supported, liked, 
um, commented, subscribed. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see you all again on our next adventure. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>